You are kind of involved in an event today um, with the chancellor, and that's one of the reasons that we wanted to uh, bring you on here, supporting um, the refugees for which she took so much flack initially, but seem now to have been absorbed relatively well. Yeah. Um, in particular, Kiron um, is a very interesting enterprise that we are partnering with um, that supports learning and education for refugee, i.e. is um, heavily involved in the integration of refugees um, over here. Let, let's talk about, because this was a huge risk for Miracle as Chancellor in 2015. And now the integration, because of efforts like this, seems to be going quite well. But what are the other risks that she has to look out for in this election? Even as she's pulling ahead, there are still issues popping up, like the diesel issue. Is that the biggest one? I think there's a whole host of issues that need to be addressed, but given she has been very clear and vocal about that during her chancellorship. Um, those are issues well rehearsed in the public. So I wouldn't say they are new. Um, it's about how you go after them, and it's about um, how you build consensus among uh, the population, what has to be done. And I think she, she's been uh, doing pretty well in that regard. She's been doing quite well on the global stage. She is seen really as the leader right now of the Western world. Um, how important is it that she remain in place. I mean, how important is that consistency? Well, I think, you know, without uh, sort of being able to predict uh, outcomes, uh, the value here is stability. And uh, given where we are on the global scene, the fact that uh, Germany displays an amazing uh, level of stability throughout the years is something which is highly valued uh, and in high demand in these days. So, you know, um, given the German elections seem to go into a direction where we can expect stability at the end of it, uh, that's something which I think uh, lots of people look at and value, and in particular in the financial markets. Uh, well, can a very good morning to you. It's Manus in, in London. As I look at somebody like Angela Merkel, she reminds me a great deal of Thatcher in many ways, in that she's going for this last term of office, and she'll want to build her epitaph, how she might be remembered. Do you think that is going to be around immigration and her role as the one that actually did the right thing for Europe? Because the rest of Europe hasn't really in regards to immigration, has it? Look, um, I think the immigration and uh, the refugee crisis is something which um, came, um, came on us, came, uh, came to Europe. Uh, not that uh, uh, you wouldn't have uh, seen it coming, uh, given uh, the globalization and its uh, effects and the instability. Um, and her way of tackling with it is certainly a very courageous, ambitious. Uh, and Europe will have to rally behind it and find a, find a solution. And I guess the more time we have to, uh, to get to such a solution, the better. In, in that sense, obviously, having her in, in, in office uh, for, for much longer would clearly help us getting there and building that consensus. But there's much to be done also in Europe on, on various levels, policies, issues, topics. So uh, clearly this could be a great uh, additional term uh, to build and strengthen Europe further, which uh, is necessary, I guess, uh, given what we're seeing on a global scale. What do you see? I mean, as an Austrian, I have to ask you about Sebastian Kurz. He'll, he would be the youngest leader in Europe. It's almost a, got a populist feel, this um, campaign to it. What are, what are his biggest challenges as the next Austrian leader? I think it's, again, it's, it's, it's getting uh, to consensus within uh, communities uh, and electorates and, and tackling the, the issues. Um, don't think they are that different from many of the issues we are facing here. Um, and dealing with the populist challenge in a constructive way, addressing concerns of people, in particular uh, looking at the geopolitical uh, um, situation that Austria is affected by as well, um, and dealing with the more, uh, the more populist forces in Austria, which are very vocal. So I think that's, um, that's clearly something he will have to deal with, given his, if he would be elected, given his um, uh, experience as a foreign secretary, is clearly um, something that he, that he is very sort of well equipped to deal with. Um, Wolfgang, I want to talk about, a, a little bit about Marcus. You obviously have a very prominent role. Uh, at, at Goldman Sachs. You are the co-CEO in Germany. Talk to me about how you see the European banking landscape beginning to play out. Yesterday we saw ABN AMRO saying that it was in talks to buy uh, IKB, a Deutsche Industriebank. Now, I suppose the question is, you know, 
are there going to be more moves within the German market itself? There was great dislocation, wasn't there, last year. So talk me through your thinking in terms of the changing German banking landscape, first of all. Look, I think uh, the, um, there's lots to be done and lots has been done, but there's still lots to be done following the crisis um, uh, in, in dealing with, uh, with banks' balance sheets. Clearly, we have seen, um, as you mentioned, some, some moves both internally when banks go about um, sort of strengthening their balance sheets on the one hand and then consolidation, although at the very, I'd say, cautious pace so far. So uh, to build a stronger European banking landscape still uh, is something which we would think would make a lot of sense. Having said that, you obviously have to create the conditions for that to be uh, able to be achieved. And that certainly has to do with the single market um, for banking and in particular with the banking union that has been talked about a lot. And only if those, let's say, conditions are in place, uh, we will have more logical grounds um, for um, combination and uh, an m a and therefore strengthening of, of of european banks which on a global scale is certainly something which should happen uh, and which makes sense to happen given what we are seeing in the us and then obviously also asia and its emerging financial groups i'm curious to know wolfgang it's a very natural question with the disquieted deutsche bank a commerce bank with the hubris that you see in many of the institutions are you winning business in 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 goldman sachs in germany have you one business as a result of the dislocation in the German market, especially in those investment banks? I think we've seen um, over the years, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing this now for close to 25 years, we've seen phases uh, where the one or other uh, competitor has grown stronger or weaker due to events within um, these institutions. But I would say there's still a healthy level of competition in investment banking. We get our fair share of the market. Um, and clearly, post the financial crisis, the international organizations, mainly the US uh, organizations, have benefited uh, from sort of getting back um, uh, into business and being in businesses that some of our competitors have been slower at or even exited or, th uh, or basically plan to exit. But, but these things ebb and flow, um, and so we see uh, still a very healthy level from domestic competition uh, in banking. Um, clearly, um, uh, you mentioned Deutsche is a very strong, um, reputable competitor in this country, and so um, I wouldn't say that there is a secular trend that you can observe, um, but rather periods of time. And, and at the moment, and given where the markets are, we face uh, and see very healthy competition here, uh, also from German uh, competitors. I want to ask about the, uh, the MIFID preparedness that everyone has been kind of all of a sudden freaking out about. Um, do you think that Goldman Sachs is going to be prepared by the January 3rd deadline? We have. I mean, MIFID has been uh, around for some time, so people had time to prepare. There's obviously a lot to do and, and, and very, very detailed processes and uh, preparedness um, or pre preparations going on for, for a very long time. So I'd say, you know, we, we, we clearly know what's coming and we've been preparing for it and we prepare for it. What do you think about the pricing, your pricing model? How's that going to look? We've seen such a wide range. I, I don't want to comment on, on specifics, but again, uh, these things have been uh, out there and proposed and, and looked at by, by, by numerous staff, and uh, so I think we're very ready to, to, to deal with them. Um, well, Ken, the one big event uh, in our market lives is, of course, today happening at, at uh, Jackson Hole, where Draghi will go and Yellen will go. When you look at markets, Wolfgang, and you do, VAR is the very essence of your institution, isn't it? Um, do you think that these markets have understood the real risk? Jacob Frankel uh, from, uh, from JP Morgan was talking to us. He's worried about not getting on. I mean, where are we with risks in markets? Do you think there are risks in markets as we go to Jackson Hole today? Uh, clearly, we have seen that... Um uh, over the recent months that the sort of low volatility environment is, is sort of coming to an end. You obviously have to look at the various markets, be it equity, be it uh, credit or, or fixed income, and their, their various uh, reactions to that. So we see different reactions there, uh, you know, com depending on the market you look at. Um, but having said that, clearly checks now all is expected um, and looked at very widely, and so people are very focused on it. Um, but um, I think the markets have been very, very focused on 
event by event on the geopolitical level now and obviously on the macro and micro level. Um, for example, a market that uh, I'm dealing with, um, the, the strategic uh, transaction market, the M&A market, you have seen a lot of transactions this year, healthy activity, but what you have seen is that the large transactions have been missing compared to other periods we look at, look at last year, for example. And one of the reasons for that is clearly um, a level of uh, anxiety and, and obviously also some volatility here as to the geopolitical agenda, um, to, to, to events there, um, and uh, the actions by um, regulators um, and the question of how well you can handicap that. And, and, and that, in my view, has been one of the reasons why we haven't seen uh, very large-scale transactions um, in, this, in these recent months, uh, but still a very healthy uh, activity of mid-sized transactions, which you can probably calibrate better the risk of. How are you feeling financial conditions right now? I mean, we, get re we were hoping to hear something from Mario Draghi on his uh, taper plan. We probably won't. And we also probably won't hear much from him on the incredible strength of the euro dollar, which has been um, an amazing run. How is that affecting German business? I think so far, uh, German business is very strong. You saw some of the numbers today in the morning. Um, and uh, clearly, um, the financial conditions per se have been extremely favorable. Yeah. Now we see some shifts there, but at the magnitude we look at are still something which we think is quite digestible, given the strength of these businesses. Having said that, obviously, if the interest environment changes materially on the one hand, and, and obviously the euro grows stronger, then these uh, will have effects on the P&Ls and, and balance sheets of the, of the German corporates. But so far, uh, this has been absorbed very well, and, um, and the business in general has been very healthy, not only the business in the Western world, but clearly also the emerging market, in particular China business. Is there a level at which, and I'm, I'm not asking you as Goldman Sachs uh, CEO, but for German business, is there a level at which the strength of the euro becomes a problem? I, I think it's very hard to handicap that. I mean, you know where we have been in recent years, um, and the economy has been able to absorb it. But clearly, the effects of that will lead on to follow on review of P&Ls, cost structures, decisions on, 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 on manufacturing, decisions on distribution. So uh, you'll see some change there. But in general, the, 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 the industry is very strong and has been able to deal with much tougher euro levels in the past. Now, clearly, that, as I said, would lead to adaption processes. But in general, I think uh, the current level is absolutely something the, 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 the corporates can deal with.